I don't know. Okay. So as you can see here on the screen, this would be the mesh uh, as generated by default. So what I did here is basically select the element size. So you are printing a shell of 1.6 millimeter wall. And I just divided that value by four, 0 0.4. The maximum value I should be using is 1.6 divided by three would be 5 0.53. But to get a more consistent uh, mesh, I use a slightly smaller element even, 0 0.4. And I don't optimize anything. The default should be okay to start with the initial mesh. And if I select the body, and select here the mesh control. I'm using a TET element, which is suitable for a body that's not uh, partitioned. So this is the default. This is what you would usually go for without too much work. But if you want to improve your mesh, there's a big potential to improve this mesh. Uh, we already know from the load case, uh, where, because we're loading here and we are fixing here, that we'll have the high stress here at the load area, and we'll have a high stress here at the bending corners. So these are areas where we want to have a dense mesh and anywhere else we don't need an extremely dense mesh. Now, what do we do to deal with that? <clears throat> we have to uh, delete the mesh and this is by clicking here and we get this extra menu if we keep pressing on the button, which is delete part native mesh, click yes, mesh is gone. And before we start optimizing the mesh itself, you can see here that you have already a sharp corner and any mesh, any mesh element generated there will have a sharp corner and will have this distortion in it. One way to avoid this is to go to the tool, virtual topology and combine faces. So it would be to select one face, click shift, select the next face and click okay. And that will just ignore this line here while it's meshing and that is a step you should do before you start meshing even because you can already know where the problem will be and you can already uh, do this combination for several surfaces before even meshing anything. So this is kind of a visual exercise from the beginning, as you can see. And just look anywhere where you expect to have that problem and start cleaning up those sharp corners and sharp areas. So some of that can be avoided from the beginning, even when you start with the CAD. And the areas that cannot be avoided, they can be combined as I'm doing at the moment. So that will, let's say, fix a lot of, the, uh, of those distorted elements. Okay, that's part one of what you can do. I will not mesh it now, just to show you the difference yet. I will do some more extra steps and then come back to mesh this. Uh, another important feature that you can do is you can separate the areas of more importance from the areas of less importance. And that you can do here in the partition feature. And the default uh, uh, or the easiest one to work with uh, would generally be um, let me see, find that one. So by defining a cut plane and you can define the cut plane, I usually go with three points or a point and a normal. So what does that mean to define a plane? If you have a point and a normal to it, that already gives you a plane. Uh, so we take this point, for example, and we take this as the normal to it. So there should be a plane that uh, is perpendicular to this vector and is connected to this point. So create a partition. And that actually uh, divides my part. So now if I want to select, I have this as a lower division and I have this as an upper division. And that allows you to further optimize your mesh to maybe have a denser mesh in the lower part and a less dense mesh in the upper part, for example. So this is how I would usually proceed is to dissect the part by partitioning it. So I would do the same exact step, but now I need to tell the software, is it the lower one I want to dissect or the upper one as partition? So I want to go for the upper one, point normal. I will select here a point, then select the vector. And you see here the direction, create partition. Now I have a central, so bottom, middle, upper. 
And now the central one is simply just an extra date. That's a very simple profile that's being extruded. So now I have a much simpler geometry to mesh. And you can keep doing this exercise for almost any other area in this, in this design. There are some tricky parts, some tricky steps later. And I'm just showing now the, let's say the simplest approach to do it. And this part is a bit complicated. So you don't have a symmetry line. If you had a symmetry line, you could also split along the symmetry line. Uh, one other useful the area to partition, I would say, for example, would be here. So I would take this point, this vector, and that would, again, give me this as an independent area. Then here you have a very simple profile to work with. Then I will try to partition again somewhere in this area. And we always need a straight line, a straight vector. So let me see if this is one. I would take again, maybe this point. Or sometimes you can also take a point in the middle, take the vector, create partition. So now here I have again a very simple extruded profile. So again, this is something you can keep doing. But again, before I mesh, you saw here there's a big density of elements that I, we don't really need that big of a density. And this is where I can use this seeding edge feature to you see the seeding here that's very dense. You can select this line, for example, select this line. You see this also on the other side on the back. So you have to think a bit in the 3D space. And this area doesn't need to be so dense. So after the selecting those four lines, at least, I can go here by size, which was 0 0.4, and increase it. Usually, it's not good to increase it too much, but we could at least double the size of the elements along those lines to 0 0.8. And if I zoom in before I click Apply, so I zoom in just to show you clear, a bit more clear what's happening. Click Apply, then the number of dots are reduced. That means the number of seeded elements are reduced. And that means width-wise, I will have less elements, but through the thickness, I still have a 0 0.4. So my elements now are a bit, let's say, squashed, uh, but they're still in a reasonable uh, ratio. But so, in, in this case, and about the length, the length, it is still 0.4 or not? Yeah, so, so the thickness, why through the thickness of the part, it's still 0.4. But through the width of the part, it's a 0 0.8. So what you were supposed to have as tetrahedral, tetrahedral elements mm -hmm. will be a bit fatter or a bit thinner in some direction. Yeah, but in about the length, like from between the lines. Yeah, that will be uh, the length between the, 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 the lines here or this lines here. With which lines do you mean? This one. That is uh, not influenced. That remains a 0 0.4. So to adjust that to 0 0.8, you have to again go with the seeding, select this edge, select this edge, click OK, and again change this to 8, click Apply. Then again, you're reducing the seeding along that direction. So okay. it's also good to do it in the, also in this direction, right? You can reduce in the plane and along this surface. It's good. It's a good to reduce, but along the thickness, it, it's not recommended in our case, in this component. We want an accurate uh, simulation in that direction. So I'm going to uh, mesh the entire part again to show you the main differences from where we were to where we got. And we had 2,500,000 2, elements before this procedure. And let's see now how many elements we have after those just very small changes we did. So the meshing obviously, in this case, takes a bit of time. It's almost done. And you should try to, for such a part, to try to target 1 million elements. That is a reasonable quantity of elements uh, to work with. So we should get the mesh in a second. That's the mesh. And you can see here why, because we partitioned, you get a much more homogeneous mesh, very much homogeneous mesh. Uh, that gives you even better results. And you get you can see that the, the size of the elements are slightly larger than what happens later and more organized than what happens later. And the more you do that, the better mesh you get. And the areas where we've hidden the line, you don't see those sharp 
corner elements anymore. So that improves a lot on the general mesh again. And now if we go to the highlight feature, select the part, click done and highlight. And we see now we have 2,300,000. So like two minutes of adjustments and we save 200,000 elements. So that's 10% improvement by five minutes spent. And uh, we had uh, 148 distorted elements by doing some virtual topology improvement. We got 108. So we saved 40, removed 40 distorted elements. And every time you do this, you can zoom in to the part and look where is the distortion still coming and what can you do about that? So in this case, that's an internal defect. You have very small mesh elements uh, internally. And to improve on that, you have to do some section view to see the internal surfaces and see what's the defect with that. Um, sometimes it helps uh, to go to the part view. So now we're in mesh, we can go to part view and that already switches to part without doing any other, creating other problems. And you just need to go to the section, which is here. This takes a bit of time, I guess. And you can go to change the plane in the section you're trying to cut. So this could work if you go through. And you can see here what's inside that area. What's causing that problem is you have a very narrow surface. So you can always investigate what's this problem source. Then we go back to the mesh. We can see that narrow surface with the sharp angles. And then you go to tools, virtual topology, combined faces, select one, click shift, select the other. And when you want to combine them, the software will ask you if you want to delete the mesh because you have to delete the mesh to remesh it. You click okay, it will take a second. And now the line should be gone as you can see. And now we can just mesh again. And then you got rid of this like, big bundle of distorted elements. So you can keep doing this, you can keep, um, you can keep partitioning the part and to improve anywhere you want the mesh. And because now I have the part separated in two volumes, when you need to remesh, you don't need to remesh the entire thing. You just need to remesh the area you adjusted. And to do that, instead of clicking on the main one, you have a second button here that says mesh region. So I only need to mesh the bottom region, which I adjusted for. And that takes much less time than remeshing the whole thing. Let's see. And we can directly now check, did we fix the problem or did we not fix the problem? That should also reduce the number of elements. So we reduced that not so considerably, but you see the distorted elements went from 100 to 14. So this is the exercise of partitioning, optimizing, and you still have a huge potential. As you've organized the elements here by partitioning, you can still organize the elements here. You can still reduce the number of elements. Uh, definitely also in this area, definitely in this other area. And you can easily reach 1 million elements for this part. That will save a lot of simulation time while maintaining simulation quality. And because of having more organized mesh, you also improve the quality actually. So it doesn't always mean that less elements is less accuracy. A more homogeneous elements is more accuracy. Okay, so that is basically it to work on the mesh improvement.